Uh, I would like to thank all of the organizers and the program committee for this event. Um, today, I am going to talk about our work uh, titled A Computer Science Oriented Approach to Introduce Quantum Computing to a New Audience. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Zeki and uh, Ignor Tepe. Um, and uh, this was a part of the QInterm project last summer. Uh, so there has been an ongoing effort to increase quantum awareness all over the world. Um, originally, uh, quantum computing courses are offered in physics departments most of the time or computer science departments at the graduate level. But uh, like we need more than that. Uh, compute, quantum computing should be introduced to a more diverse group uh, with different backgrounds. And there have been some efforts, for instance, um, IBM is organizing some summer schools um, and, and yearly long courses in collaboration by Qubit by Qubit. Um, or, for instance, Microsoft is collaborating with universities uh, to teach uh, Q Sharp their own quantum programming language. And there are also some efforts uh, to introduce quantum computing to high school students. Uh, for instance, Quantum Quest was such a course a monthly uh, long course to introduce uh, quantum computing to high school st students. Uh, so recently there have been such ongoing efforts and there is also this question of um, how to introduce quantum computing to people who are coming from different backgrounds. So right now we don't have only physics people or we don't have only computer science people. And maybe for instance, a, a physics oriented approach may not be the best way uh, to introduce quantum computing to people who don't have any physics background. And in this work, um, our aim is to inform academics and organizations uh, who are interested in introducing quantum computing to a wide uh, group of audience uh, coming from different backgrounds. And uh, it is intended that the proposed methodology uh, would help more people to enter into the field. And uh, this educational approach is adopted by QWorld uh, and uh, implemented by, uh, during the bronze workshops uh, through the material bronze, which I will discuss next. Uh, so right now we are in Quantum Science Day is organized by QWorld and QWorld is a global network of communities and individuals uh, who are trying to popularize quantum technologies uh, and like giving some educations uh, to introduce uh, more people into the field. And uh, QWorld started by organizing uh, quantum programming and computing workshops called uh, QBronze. And those workshops are based on the material bronze, uh, which is prepared by Abuzarya Kayumas, who is also the uh, founder of QWorld. And this bronze material is an introductory material for uh, introducing quantum computing. Uh, it consists of Jupyter notebooks, and uh, the only prerequisite for the material is having some basic Python knowledge and some uh, basic linear algebra. And even if you don't satisfy those prerequisites, there are also some uh, introductory notebooks within the material to introduce people uh, basic programming concepts and basic linear algebraic concepts such as vectors and matrices. And um, the notebooks contain both theoretical background on the subjects and also uh, practical programming tasks. So um, quantum computing is introduced through quantum programming. Uh, Qiskit is the main uh, quantum programming language for uh, those notebooks. Uh, here you see a screenshot from the material. The material is publicly available uh, on GitLab. You can access the material. And this is also the material that is used uh, for the QBronze workshops. And um, the approach behind bronze is that it's computer science oriented and almost uh, it doesn't contain any physics at all. Uh, and the concepts are abstracted through linear algebra. And um, as a choice, complex numbers are not introduced at all. And uh, this is preferred in order to not to introduce one more level of complexity uh, into the picture, coming, which will come by uh, complex numbers. And um, in bronze, quantum computing is viewed as a generalization of classical computing. So in classical computing, uh, bits can be either zero or one. And then we move on to probabilistic computing, 
where bits can have any value between zero and one. And now in quantum computing, we're also allowing uh, negative numbers, uh, some square rules and so on. So like we have a generalization starting from classical, going to probabilistic and then to uh, quantum computing. And uh, this approach is also adopt adopted by uh, some computer science originated quantum computer researchers, uh, such as to quote Aronson. And he says um, quantum mechanics is something which mathematicians could also came up with. Uh, for instance, when like try to generalize, generalize probabilities and like let's introduce negative probabilities, uh, even if there were no physical correspondence, we could have come up with this mathematical theory. Uh, and he moves on and says, okay, like in probability, uh, in probability theory, uh, we are using L1 norm when uh, the vectors, uh, the, num the sum of the entries in the vectors is adding up to one. And now we are moving to quantum and now the L2 norm is equal to one uh, when you consider the vectors. Uh, so this approach, um, is uh, also like popularized by him and some other computer scientists. And um, here is the content of bros. Uh, we start by uh, basics of classical systems where uh, classical bits are introduced and then comes the probabilistic bits and uh, they're introduced through coin flips. And after uh, those, we have now the quantum part. Uh, we start by um, quantum bits and quantum states. Uh, since everything is focused on real numbers, so there are no complex numbers, the only operators that are introduced are those which are uh, using real numbers. Uh, using real numbers also allow visualization on the 2D plane. Uh, so instead of block sphere, we focus on the 2D plane. And um, then entanglement is introduced together with two protocols, predense coding and quantum teleportation. And finally, we have a Grover search algorithm. And um, to assess the effectiveness of this approach, um, we conducted experiments with the participants of 317 participants uh, from 22 workshops. Those workshops were not online. Um, they were on-site workshops uh, taking either two or three days. And um, before the workshop and after the workshop, uh, participants filled uh, some forms, which we call pre-test and post-test. Uh, in the first form, um, in the both forms, the same questions are asked and uh, participants are identified by their ID numbers. And um, in this test, they answered some basic questions uh, about quantum computing and quantum programming. And here you see the list of workshops uh, from which we use the data. And uh, on the right hand side, you see uh, demographics of the participants joining the workshops. Uh, filling those forms is not mandatory and only uh, people who volunteered uh, filled those forms. And here you see a screenshot of the forms, uh, participation and satisfaction forms. Uh, in the participation uh, form, we also ask some demographic information such as gender, age and education level. And um, as I mentioned, both, uh, both forms contains this knowledge test uh, you see right now. Uh, we asked some basic questions. Uh, here we are measuring the um, lowest level of uh, learning, which is called knowledge according to Bloom's taxonomy. So it's the most basic level. Uh, we are just measuring uh, basic knowledge retention uh, with those questions. Uh, to assess whether there were any significant increase in the knowledge of the participants, uh, the first thing we did was. Uh, to, to use some normality tests to see the distribution of the scores. And then uh, they were normal. And then we used t-test uh, to compare uh, the mean scores of the pre and post tests. And um, then we also calculated a normalized gain score. So what is normalized gain score? Um, so here m means the mean. So we take the post uh, test score mean and uh, from this, we subtract the mean, uh, mean pretest score. And this gives you the gain. Uh, but um, if you divide this by 100 minus mean of the pretest score, this gives you the normalized gain score. And this gives you information about 
um, how much could have been learned and how much is learned. So this 100 minus pretest score gives you the uh, possibility of learning more on top of the pretest score. And um, according to this metric, um, a normalized gain score of between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 is considered to be medium gain. And if it's larger than that, then it's considered high gain. And there's another metric we have used, which is called Cohen's D metric. And this also takes into account the standard deviation of the mean scores. And it gives, uh, it's called the effect size. And the, uh, if this Cohen's D is larger than 0 0.6, then um, it's considered as a large effect size. And um, here are the results. On the left-hand side, you see a plot uh, showing uh, pretest and post-test scores of all the participants. Uh, greens are pretest scores and yellows are the post-test scores. And uh, the gain uh, score is 38, and meaning that the pretest score was 32 and post-test mean score was 71. And the normalized gain is calculated as 0 0.57, indicating a medium gain. And uh, Cohen's D effect size is calculated as 1.68, which is uh, a large effect size. And uh, one of our claims was that uh, this approach is viable for introducing quantum computing to people coming from uh, different backgrounds. And to test this, uh, we grouped participants into five, um, depending on their educational backgrounds. Uh, we have computer science, physics, uh, engineering, and science, which contains all other departments related to science, such as maths, biology. And we have high school students uh, in our uh, sample set. And uh, the first thing we did was uh, to check whether there were any differences among different groups of participants. And the tests revealed out that there were no significant difference among different groups, uh, among the learning, um, among the knowledge retention of different groups. And another thing we checked was whether there was a significant increase for each group. And the answer was yes. Um, here you see the normalized gain scores and also Cohen's D effect sizes uh, for different groups. And uh, there was a significant increase uh, for each group. And we also asked uh, some questions uh, about the satisfaction level of the participants. And those were all um, above 4.5, except one uh, question, and it was about timing. Uh, so participants uh, like were not happy with, uh, by not happy, I mean like the average was again uh, 4.17 over five, but uh, that question was, I had enough time to think through the tasks and problems on my own. Uh, so the, since the material was intense and it was limited to three days, uh, sometimes participants struggled with time. Uh, but other than that, um, so all participants, almost all participants were uh, satisfied uh, with the workshops. And to conclude, um, we claim that the proposed approach is appealing uh, for an audience who does not want to learn the physics part or who will not understand, who will, who will not need such understanding. And uh, this approach uh, facilitates increasing quantum awareness among a diverse group. And like if after this, uh, after learning using this approach, if someone wants to learn the physics part, they can continue uh, from th that path as well. And besides uh, learning quantum computing, uh, participants are also introduced to quantum programming. And this is a side benefit of this approach, uh, learning quantum programming. And um, the conducted, conducted tests revealed a significant increase in the knowledge retention of the participants uh, for, from uh, diverse backgrounds. And uh, recently, our paper is accepted for publication in the journal uh, IEEE Transactions on um, Education. And also, its archive link is available. Uh, you can check it in Discord. And uh, thank, you, thank you for listening. Um, now I can answer if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Oslem. Um, so um, 
well, there aren't any specific questions for your program. We have definitely benefited from your programs um, in our Q Bronze Workshop here in Pakistan as well, uh, as part of Q Cousin and Q World. And um, so we have some minutes if, um, uh, let's see, let me. So uh, as uh, Oslam said, there are archive links, both for um, archive and for IEEE to her paper in the uh, um, uh, Discord channel, and you can find it there. So I think we conclude the talk here. Thank you very much, Oslam. Uh, thank you. There was a question by um, Just Will there be any pilot programs under IEEE oh, called Minishe? Yes. Uh, so, um, so would you like to answer that? Uh, so personally, I am not involved, but uh, as the Q Education Department and also Zeki, uh, we are involved in all of uh, in all of the pilots, like outreach, um, also um, masters, uh, industry. So we are involved in those pilots. 